Welcome to Win Games, Strategies for Success. Today we're going to talk about the Taverns of Tiefenthal. And I'll assume, as always, that you know how to play and just want to know how to win. We're going to be working with all of the mo modules. And we're going to simulate a three-player game after we talk a little bit about the strategy. So the first question we have to answer in the Taverns of Tiefenthal is what's stopping us? What would cause us to not be able to continue to play and earn points? And the answer is a lack of tables. Start with only three and a lack of dice. We can get more of those by purchasing these two cards right here. So those will be key. But how do we purchase them? Well, we would have to have gold, which we get by recruiting these guests, and that requires beer. So we'll see there's a bit of an economy to it. Now the real balance in the Taverns of Tiefenthal has to do with how you acquire your nobles. Nobles are where the big points are, and in order to acquire those nobles, you must either get a whole bunch of beer and purchase them directly, or upgrade portions of your tavern to earn them. The upgrading of the tavern costs so much money that you're going to have to have quite a few of these already purchased in order to get a discount, and therein lies the balance. We trade these cards in, say three temporary servers, for one permanent server in order to get a noble. But it turns out that throughout the game, I'd much rather have three temporary servers than one permanent server, because it doesn't take me that long to get through the deck. Unlike virtually every other deck builder, when you acquire cards in this game, they go immediately on top of your deck, not to your discard pile. And they don't clog up your deck unless they're a guest. That means we can buy as much of this as we want, and it all works to our benefit. So our strategy is going to be to acquire a whole bunch of these cards throughout the game, and then in the final round, we should be able, if we've bounced enough guests and gained enough tables, to get every single card out on the board. We would then get the benefit of having all of those cards and then cash them in for the value in nobles. We don't really need the nobles until the end of the game for scoring. So let's take a look at the strategy as it plays out. We're going to use the standard start deck. We'll talk about variable setup at the end. What are we looking to pick up over the course of the game? Well, we really want to get a whole lot of tables. Uh, again, looking for probably three more tables than we have guests. We'll want to pick up three really good guests, as well as three servers, four to five brewers, and maybe three dishwashers if we can get it. For drafting purposes here, we're going to have our opponents always take the die that we would really want them to leave. So we'll get the worst draft. You'll also notice we got the worst opening draw. So if this works, it's certainly not pendant on luck. So we advanced twice on the bartender track, stored two beer, stored two gold, and advanced once on the monastery track. Our hope is that in round two, those more powerful cards will come up and we'll be able to start acquiring things. Round two also brings the Dancer, which we'll use for coin, and we will spend our schnapps as quickly as we can, as long as it's on things that line up with our strategy. Because you get the benefit of a card immediately, there's not a whole lot of motivation to save schnapps. We're also looking to bounce about three guests over the course of the game, but bouncing guests will primarily be done by the bartender track, if we can get more beer and coin, we can move around that faster and get three of those guests out by round seven. As we place dice, all things being equal, we want to balance our beer and our coin. However, we want to ensure that we can purchase a table, and there are going to be turns where you need to acquire a quality guest. In this case, we get a guest who pays high. Four is the lowest number we would take on a guest. We prefer fives. We'll take sixes if we can. We'd rather use those for beer. Having saved two gold from round one and having two schnapps, we can purchase both a table and a server in round two. We advance on the monastery track and pick up a bar back, so things should pick up for round three. We're also going to be picking up our fire breather in round three. We'll put them on the side that lets us bounce guests, although we generally won't spend two schnapps to bounce a guest. We'd rather add a gold to that and get a table, which comes with two extra victory points and a little bit more versatility with regards to when we spend our schnapps. The bigger piece is that we now have our high value gold guest out. And as you get these more valuable guests out, you'll start to have more income. With five gold, we want to get a table. 
If we can get to nine, we'll get a table and a server, provided that we don't have three servers yet. And if we do have three servers, then we'll pick up a brewer. Or if we get to 15, we'll get one of each. If you're stuck in between, it is possible to pick up dishwashers. They can be worthwhile, but they're not a high priority. Our top priority as we're drafting dice is to fill that high value gold guest. We're able to do that. What's left doesn't afford us any more beer or coin. So as we're selecting our die locations, we're gonna shift to fill our homebrew. We wanna pick up at least two beer because we wanna advance on the bartender track. Our initial priority on the guest book is the seven, eight guest column that gets us to a table the quickest. We'll pop those two beer in the cellar, advance three times on the monastery track for a dishwasher, and as always, buy a table, keep the change. For the purpose of our simulation, we're actually gonna clear the guest cards now. Other people have been buying and we'll put up a fresh set. We weren't able to acquire a high value guest, so there's the potential that turn four will also be a low turn, but we should be able to push around the bartender track to at least bounce one of our guests. Our overall goal in the game is to get all of our cards out in both round seven and round eight. We'd like to have a fair number of brewers by then so that we could potentially buy nobles. We'll see what we get. With not a lot happening on the gold front, you'll notice that our brewer is out and we have two beer in the cellar. So this would be a good time to try to pick up our second high value guest. We'll use the five from our server and the dishwasher to start that process. And then we'll draft for as many as we can get. Even with that goal in mind, we wanna make sure that we balance our gold and our beer because we need to keep moving on the bartender track. So we're gonna switch things up a bit here. We'll move that five over to the bank and we'll use our dishwasher on the one. I should have moved it over to a two up there, but that'll give us three gold to allow us to advance three times. We'll bounce this guest and then buy our high value guest. This gives us a signature token to advance three times. And then you'll recall that guest allows us to advance three times. So we'll pick up a noble and some more schnapps, which will help us when we spend. And once again, we're able to afford another table. I know it seems boring, but hang on for it. It'll all come out. In round five, we'll pick up our juggler. We will put it on the side that allows us to fix dice for a schnapps because we don't need to put cards back on top of our deck. We're going through our deck quite quickly as it is. We're also anticipating some high value guests, both the one that we purchased, as well as that first one. So this should be a good turn for gold. So we'll get a hit on fives or sixes, no dishwasher, no schnapps, gotta get it from the draft. And we got the five. Having a lot of gold now, we'll focus on drafting for our beer, try to keep it in balance. We won't have much luck because they're gonna draft that golden beer away from us. But if we can just get two, we can hit that signature and that next signature in our guest book is gonna get us the table that we want. And we'll pick up the second beer with our homebrew. Now we can only store one of those two because we already have one beer in storage. We will not buy a cost three guest. We will let one of those beers spill on the floor and store the other one because we only want guests that bring us a lot of gold. Only having five gold essentially to spend here, we'll pick up a table. We could spend the schnapps in the last gold for a dishwasher, but it's more important to have gold for the things that we want to buy next round. It would have been really nice at this point to have hit on both of our high guests and been able to purchase a brewer as well, but as we couldn't, we went with the table. The other reason we save that schnapps is that we can't afford to miss again on one of our high gold guests. So we may need to turn a die using the juggler and we need to have a schnapps to do it. Round six, we go with the extra die for our bonus and notice how close we come to getting our whole deck out. We weren't able to purchase another high gold guest, but we've rolled all the way back through our deck and we'll have three extra dice now, counting our two servers to use during this round. And despite all that, there is not a single five or six to help us with our gold. So those schnapps are gonna come into play. Again, we're drafting to balance our gold and our beer and we'll use the schnapps at the end to fix whichever die we can't use to bring us the most gold. And it looks like it's gonna be that last three we just drafted and placed below the board. We'll spend a schnapps to treat it like a six. We now have nine gold and eight beer. So we'll get to move eight times on the bartender track. We'll bounce a guest. We'll pick up a noble and we'll make it back around to the two. We'll spend all of that beer to pick up another high value guest and we'll put that signature token at the bottom 
picking up one last noble in addition to the bonuses printed on the card. With those nine gold and the one we have saved, we have enough for both a brewer and a server. This is the first time we're not buying a table. We plan to get everybody out next round. We're going to have three counter guests with which to do it if we need to. But we have to get to three servers. We're a little behind on brewers because we haven't had the income we wanted. And we've basically given up on the dishwashers. And here we hit one of the fabulous bailouts for this strategy. We have those counter guests. And when things go poorly, you get to discard everything you've drawn and continue drawing. One of the huge advantages of that is that you're always discarding three more guests than you are tables. So what's left in your deck is a really good ratio of guests to tables. You're very likely to get a bunch of tables out afterwards, then reshuffle what you discarded, and you'll have a space for those guests. Now, if you've been keeping track, we picked up a table in every single round. The one we didn't purchase one was covered by the one we earned from the guest book. So we have six tables going. In addition, we've purchased three guests and a stack of nobles, and we've bounced two guests, which means we have our deck exactly where we want it for getting everything out. We're ready now to pick up maybe one more table, just in case something goes wrong, but mostly we're looking to earn a bunch of money by brewers. With our beer, we want to start purchasing nobles because we don't need any more guests. But to do that, we're going to have to get up to nine. We've got those three dice, but unfortunately, once again, we hit some awful luck. Our neighbors are going to draft to keep the sixes away from us, and that five is the only high gold guest we're going to be able to hit on. But we did save a schnapps, so we will be able to turn one of those dice into whatever we want. At this point, it's keeping a balance between the beer and the gold, as well as making sure we get to nine beer to purchase the noble. And it will cost us our schnapps on that last die. We'll turn it into a one, we'll say a six, in case we change our mind later. And that'll get us the nine beer we need. We will also get to move on the bartender track eight times, pick up the schnapps and a signature, use the signature to fill in the row that's closest to getting us a noble, and I'll leave the 3-4 guest open in case we have some extra beer next round that we want to use to buy that guest and earn a noble. This round, of course, we're using our 9 beer to recruit a noble directly. And I'm still going to use our gold to buy a table. It might seem a little late to do that, but if we can get all of our guests out without having to use any of our counter guests, those two counter guest advancements will pick us up a noble. So it could be worth it. We'll spend the schnapps and buy a brewer as well, keeping one for change and we are ready for the finale. The bonus offered as we head into round eight is a table or a brewer. We'll take the brewer, we're two ahead on tables, and we'd really like to get five beer per die. That gives us a very good chance of the 18 beer necessary to recruit three nobles. We'll see if we can get it. We also knew we had a schnapps coming and that'll cover any bad rolls. So to summarize our strategy, on the purchasing side, first you buy tables, then tables and servers, then tables and brewers, once you have three servers, all depending, of course, on how much money you're making. For the guests, we want to get those big beer turns where we can pick up a guest who'll give us money on a four, five, or six. We only want three of them. And as we place our dice, we're balancing the beer and the money so that we can move around the bartender track and hopefully balance, balance at least three of our guests. We're saving our counter guests to make sure we get all of our cards out in rounds seven and eight. And in rounds seven and eight, we're using our beer to recruit nobles. In the guest book, we want to give high priority to the seven, eight guests. And towards the end, we fill out that top row to pick up one more noble. And this draft is going to help us out. It looks like we're going to hit on more than one of our high gold guests. Now, we really want to have three dice down there with our brewers to pick up 15 beer, because along with the homebrew, and our bar back and cellar, that would put us to 18 and get us three guests. So we'll spend the schnapps to turn that last die to whatever it takes in order to score there. 13 gold will then allow us to move 13 times on the bartender track, and we'll pick up that last signature we need to get a noble. This time around, we will not bounce a guest. We'll grab the schnapps because at the end of the game, it's worth a victory can also be spent to upgrade, and that could get us one more noble. We will then spend those 18 beer to grab three nobles. We'll grab them all at once. 
And then we'll start moving around the board. Three brewers to upgrade, take a noble. Three tables will allow us to take a noble and flip our table board. Yeah, I'm not gonna flip it, I'll just take the noble. Three servers, flip it and take a noble. And then we spend our money, six, and we'll upgrade the safe, not the dishwasher, because the dishwasher is worth a point if we can save him. Then we'll spend seven, and that'll allow us to upgrade our cellar for an additional noble. And we are sadly one gold shy if you consider our schnapps from being able to upgrade the dishwasher. But I'd say considering the 15 nobles we see here, plus the one more I could have had if I remembered to cash in my counter guests, we did pretty well. A quick note on variable setup, choose the standard setup as often as you can. If not, the other two cards in the top row work equally well. The following two cards would be the next best choice, and we'll never have to resort to the other two because there are always three cards drawn. If you don't have a brewer, you will have to buy one early. It'll affect your overall ceiling, but it will still optimize your points. And that's how you win Taverns of Tiefenthal. Thanks for watching.